Hello, great people. Welcome back to Global Health Things Today. We're so excited to have you again. The governor of Bauchi State, who is intending to run for presidency under the People Democratic Party, PDP, stormed a number state. And uh, he went there with a message for IPOB, uh, which we are going to be looking at in a jiffy. Don't forget that uh, Bala Mohammed is uh, one man who has been showing a lot of interest in uh, the Southeast and also who knows about oh, IPOB activities and all of that. This time around, he has come there and is downplaying the possibility of uh, IPOB achieving self-determination and he gave his reasons why it will be so. Uh, we're going to be looking at that in a jiffy. But before we do that, if you've not subscribed to our channel, please do well. Hit on the red subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you get notification anytime we publish our videos. Now, according to the news, the governor of Bauchi State, Governor Bala Mohammed, says achieving self-determination might be difficult since Ibu own half of the country. Mohammed, who is a presidential aspirant on the platform of People Democratic Party, PDP, said this while wooing a number of delegates on Friday. He said if he is elected the president, he would bring out the best in Nigerians, irrespective of tribes and religion. Mohammed said Nigerians' problems are anchored on leadership recruitment, noting that if leadership was fair and just, the country will be better for it. This, according to him, he said, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am standing here before you, offering myself to serve and return Nigeria to greater height and greatness. With you, you, we will review and relaunch this country so that we can regain our national pride. If you are voting as delegates, vote wisely. If you have a better person, vote him or her. If I am not the best, don't vote for me, but I know I'm the best. I have the experience and capacity to lead this country to greater glory. But if at the primary I am not elected, I will support whosoever that images as images so that Nigeria can get out of the mess. He said that he had interacted most actively with the Igbos and benefited from them, noting that most of his mentors are Igbos. According to his word, he said, I have traversed all strata of lives in the country. Being a minister, senator, work with various people across the country, and I understand the problem of this nation. I believe that every Nigerian should be respected wherever he or she goes. My work as a minister, senator, exposed me to the problem of the country, and I have gathered better experience to lead this great nation. I am not unaware of the feelings of the South, especially the South East on zoning. But let's look at the issues in context. The South East and the North East are suffering the same. The North East has not been there just like South East. We cannot produce president alone. We have to do it persuasively. According to him, the entrepreneurial and enterprise in the South East is a great potential everybody must leverage on for the inter in industrialization of this great country. When I was a minister of finance, or oh, sorry, when I was a minister of federal capital territory, the Igbo's capital investment in Abuja was over 50%. That is the true position. And not only in Abuja, but in Kano, Lagos, Kaduna, and others. So we are interrelated and connected as a people in Nigeria. We need to stabilize that symbiotic that binds us together. When IPOB is talking about self-determination and self-actualization, for we, when you owe over half of the country, God may not give you everything. He has given something to you. And that is the truth. Because of this, I am calling for this unity and fraternity among us. If the evil youth understand this, they will now know the need for peace and unity in the country. Those were the words of Bala Muhammad that the Ndibos 
own half of the country. And he had also stated the level of investment that is owned by Ndibos. According to him, he said that in most of the large cities in Nigeria, Ndibos have more than 50% investment there, which is absolutely true. Even when you go to the northern part of Nigeria, you see most of the houses that are built by the Ndibos. Go to any place. Uh, when I, many years ago, when I was serving in a particular state, someone told me, I, when I went into the state, I was a little bit scared, scared in the sense that um, I didn't know anybody there. And as at that time, there was this um, fear of uh, insecurity, Boko Haram just started then and all of that. So when I went there, I was so prayerful and someone now told me, you don't have to be scared. See, let me tell you, when if you must be scared is if there is no Igbo man in the environment you find yourself because these guys are good enough in surveying the environment and they must always prove their industrialized lifestyle wherever they find themselves. He now took me around the place and uh, showed me different um, Igbo businessmen. This one will be selling chemists. The other one was selling uh, a big shop. He owns the biggest shop in the... The place was like a farm settlement, you know. Uh, and an Igbo man, more than five of them were there. And they were one controlling trading in that environment. People can sell farm produce and all of that. But when it had to do with clothes and the likes, the Nibos were the only people who were in charge of that. And, and you know, with time, I was co very comfortable with them. And I started enjoying myself. Now, why am I saying all of this? Just to portray the point that Bala Muhammad has made. That Nibos own virtually more than 50% of the investment. But talking about the issue of God not giving to IPOM what they so much desire, that's where the issue is difficult because uh, right now they, 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 they have very visible reasons why they are doing what they are doing and why they are pushing for you know self-determination and all of that. For a while, they have been marginalized far beyond most other places. Igbos, when you're talking about Igbos, you know, we are talking about at a particular ethnic group. In Nigeria, we have three major ethnic groups. We have the houses, we have the universe, and we have the Igbos. Fulani just came in some days ago, but Guess what? The truth remains that the Igbos are well-known ethnic group in Nigeria. So up till now, not seeing them, you know, in any position of leadership, I mean, worries a great deal. I think that was what gave me to IPOP. I feel that at this point, telling them that you're not going to get this one because God has given you everything cannot work. Ideal word for them is for you to tell them what you're coming to offer that can calm down their anger and, you know, cool down the temper. But shockingly, virtually all of them keep saying one word. We don't need any other thing. We want out. Why? Because of the treatment. Now, what even wasn't the whole thing was the case of this late Deborah, whom we all watch a video that was, I mean, mind-breaking how she, she was treated. And even someone who calls himself an, a renowned scholar, you know, Muslim scholar, have the audacity you know, to say that, hey, they should do more. He even held those people who did it. And I'm, I'm like, man, this thing you are raising now may haunt you tomorrow. And that is one of the things that, again, has instigated people. And you see people, a lot of people talking. So I even said that, hey, they can't stop holding their weapons because of some of the things that they have seen thus far. This is not good. I feel that at this point, we should come to a, 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 a drawing board and know what to do to make sure that all these agitations that we are seeing calm down. The words of Bala Muhammad may not really calm down the situation, you understand? But however, he has spoken. Do you think that Nibos will still get what they want? Listen to